There is an abundant offering of mystery and wonder within our universe. But what do you get when you infuse humor and joy into each and every conversation to helping others gain insight within that mystery and wonder within our everyday lives? Well, you get the Mystery and Wonder podcast where you will gain exactly that a greater experience to the abundance within. And so here is your host for today's podcast, Trixie Woodcock Phelps, only on Real Revolution Radio X. Hi, this is Trixie Phelps with Soul Balancing, and now my new podcast show, Mystery and Wonder, and exploring the universe and its extraordinary and amazing life, past, present, and future. Thank you for joining me here. I'm so excited to share with you my experiences as well as those of my guests. Let me first give you a little bit of information about me and how I came to be here now. I am a fifth generation sensitive, intuitive, empath, and healer. As a little girl, I remember watching spirits in my room. Of course, I just didn't think a whole lot about it. Nobody else talked about it, so I kept it to myself. And I remember hearing someone talking to me when no one was around Always kind of soft and comfortable conversation, so I never totally dismissed that, thankfully. <laughs> I remember the feeling of energy shooting out of my hands, and particularly at a time when I was visiting my dad. He was having health issues, kind of a knee pain, back pain, and he was fighting cancer. So during his visits, I was feeling his pain, and I had placed my hand on his knee for a moment, and we both fell silent, and then he says to me, you have the hands of an angel. And as soon as he said that, it sunk in, and that was actually when the light really came on for me as a young adult to begin exploring my gifts. And what a journey that's been. Yeah, Many years later after that, I did connect with my first shamanic teacher who had opened me up to better harnessing and refining the sensations and the different energies and gifts and things that I had. And then over that time while I was training, I also was very intrigued with Reiki and certified there, master teacher, as well as going through and certifying animal Reiki. I then also came across palm reading, which I was at first like, oh, no. mm -mm." And then after having experienced it, I was like, hooked. Yeah, mm -hmm, I'm on this. So now I also work with intuitive palm reading. I've always been a crystal lover, and over the years, collecting rocks and crystals and such, began to teach myself to wire wrap jewelry in a very sacred way. And then I also came across my second shamanic teacher. So lots of experience over the years, many, many uh, different ways to work with what I was given as a gift, and I am loving life now. I combined all my gifts and talents, and I offer different services through my business, soulbalancing.world. Here I would love to bring forth and share with you guys what the amazing universe brings to us and how synchronized things are when they come across our paths. In fact, I had been pondering about the direction I was heading, given so much in my direction, and I found myself curious about radio hosting. And I see a lot of my colleagues working in this industry and wondering, you know, how they got started, what did they need to know, how did they train. (laughs) And all the while, I found myself playing with software that lets me play or edit with the audio and video and as well as sound effects and such like this, and not really knowing what that was going to do or where it was going to take me. And little did I know that eventually it was going to bring me here. I had come across Joel on Facebook, uh, the producer here on Real Real Revolution Radio, and he was giving an intro on his website, and I had stayed for the duration and found myself connected, like this is it, this is the connection, this feels right. There was just a yes. (laughs) <laughs> all the way through. So, of course, I reached out, and he replied back, and we've just been going back and forth ever since. And, again, I'm here today because of all those synchronicities the universe brings us, a lot of mystery, a lot of wonder. And I'm excited to be here now with this new adventure on Real Revolution Radio XO and, of course, bringing to you a very special guest of mine, Alan Sims. Alan Sims is the lineage holder and bearer of the Estrophen Traditions of Shamanism and Sacred Art. Alan began his training at three years old in the fairy traditions of his family and spiritual system founded upon the knowledge, beliefs, and practices of ancient European cultures. He has been working within the Elder European Path for over 40 years and has initiated into several lineages 
from his many from many cultures all over the world since. Ellen is also the founder of Ancestral Pathways International, dedicated to teaching the healing arts to the next generation of seekers and the host of the Gathering of Elders based in Sacramento. When you participate in the session with Alan, you will experience the depth and breadth of his powerful skills and rich knowledge in folklore and oral tradition. Be prepared to open up to deeper knowledge of your own soul through a variety of processes, including soul retrievals, sound healings, extractions, ancestral healing, sound healing, soul chanting, coaching, and mentoring. So please join with me as we welcome my special guest, Alan Sims. Thank you for being with us, Alan. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for having me. You bet, you bet. I'm so excited about reading through your intro. And, of course, I've known you for several years now, and it still just surprises me some of these amazing things that you have to offer. Of course, this is a wonderful opportunity to share that both with myself and our listeners. Um, Tell me a little bit about how you got started. One of my aunts from Europe was down in the U.S., and uh, while she was in the U.S., she visited uh, our family and uh, <clears throat> was babysitting. And uh, she had scheduled a client to come over. So she asked my three-year-old self to to come over. The client was laying up the on the platform and she goes Alan where where do your hands go and I'm like (laughs) I looked and didn't quite know what was going on but I saw these handprints that were glowing on the on the lady so I just placed my hands there and after a few moments those disappeared and others appeared so I just kept placing my hands where the glowing handprints were. And when I didn't see any more handprints, I stopped. And um, <clears throat> that officially began uh, my work. My family began uh, working with me more, including me in more things. And... Uh, yeah. Well, that's pretty exciting to start so so young and intrigued with what uh, what she was working with you on, huh? Yeah, it was really amazing, and the different family members with their different skill sets mm-hmm. and their contacts all over the world, being able to travel and work with different people in different parts of the world has been very enriching. And uh, the knowledge, while so much, uh, so much of the knowledge and the training is the same across the world, there's always the cultural differences and then the nuances that each individual practitioner has from their experience Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. enriches everything I do. That's excellent. Well, there's a lot of, I'm sure, listeners that aren't familiar with an SFN tradition of shamanism. Could you give us a little bit of a background or some history on what that is? The SFN tradition is my family's tradition. Um, so like a lot of family traditions, um, it's not necessarily going to have a history that you can point to in documents and what have you. Mm-hmm. Um, sure, sure. It's a, it's a family tradition. It's a, a small concentrated set of uh, practices and techniques, uh, primarily oriented toward um, retaining certain uh, folk stories 
collected by family members and also the practices uh, from those time frames that have been passed down through the generations uh, <clears throat> and then those addendums because you know uh, like anything uh, you know it's a living tradition so it mm-hmm. it, it moves and, and grows and changes Mm-hmm. you know, over the generational um, time frames. Yes, yes, as it should be, I believe, yes, to stay up with the current frequencies of the planet mm-hmm. and all the influences that are thereof. <laughs> right. And my family was part of a, a network of healers, indigenous healers, uh, in those different parts of the world. Uh, and so it was... Um, <clears throat> You know they had they had their family traditions that they shared with other people who had family traditions because so m- many of these family traditions have been uh, you know, aspects lost uh, over the course of uh, you know the events that took place in Europe with you know with the indigenous people and the Catholic Church and the up and coming. Uh, medical profession you know a lot of things have been lost Mm -hmm. a lot of families um, uh, their traditions uh, had to either go underground or maybe even you know come Mm -hmm. to an end so when you have a network of of small families with their systems sharing their systems to preserve um, this knowledge I think it's very important that, um, you know, even even if a, a family tradition isn't popular in the in the historical documents, it still exists. Mm-hmm. True. And I agree have to with that. Yeah. That, um, you know, there there are still a lot of things that um, a lot of family traditions that are still uh, refuse to come out into the open. <laughs> you can't blame them given the history of what happened when they were more public. Yeah. Yeah. So. Excellent. Well, that's so wonderful that you were able to retain what you have retained from your family traditions and bring them forth and share them in a really good way in your business now. And that's your Ancestral Pathways International that you're doing, correct? Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. This is um, really intriguing. There's so much rich history of information that you have that you're bringing forward. So I'm very grateful that you are doing that and on the path that you are. So thank you for being you. (laughs) Oh, certainly. You're welcome. Yes. I'm curious, too. Of course, I really connect well with fairies and the Tularic realm, and I work with them energetically. I love to be outside and in the yard and You know, there's just so many wonderful experiences to be had in that way. Do you have any stories or any other additional kind of information to share around the fairy traditions or your experiences with them? Well, one of the things, uh, there's a, in the popular media, in the New Age, New Thought community particularly, uh, there's been this upsurge of interest in in fairy, mm-hmm. and uh, <clears throat> well, a lot of it is uh, it's not folkloric, and it's not necessarily uh, based in tradition. There's a lot of stuff that is, has a lot of um, orientation from the Victor- Victorian period and also a lot of influences from Disney. Uh, yeah. So, uh, and so a lot of people are, are trying to work with these beings with these kind of distorted perspectives. Mm-hmm. Um, uh Part of my work with a small group of people right now is uh, rebuilding uh, the 
ferry contact uh, here in America so mm-hmm. that we have a dedicated group of people who are uh, authentically approaching uh, the fairy beings and their realm uh, in accord with uh, traditional spiritual courtesy. Yes, yes. Uh, because, it, go you ahead know, and explain re- what that means for, for our listeners, uh, what you're saying um, there. Rebuilding uh, the community uh, that used to exist between human and fairy, mm-hmm. as well as human and, and, and nature, uh, mm-hmm. is an important factor here. So <clears throat> I've been to public rituals where people are, you know, they'll use the words, I command and demand that you appear now. That's it's very disrespectful, isn't it? Yeah, that's not building community. <laughs> that doesn't have a spiritual courtesy. Uh, also, they tend to, uh, when they're doing, you know, offering uh, the food and drink, uh, whatever that tradition's food and drink would be uh, for that ritual, uh, they tend to offer it at the end after all the participants, let's say there's 50, 60 people in that public ritual, uh, they offer what's left to, you know, to the beings. And that's inappropriate also. I mean, you have these guests, you're asking to come, uh, and then they, you know, traditionally part of the spiritual courtesy, would they would get the first and the best of what you have gathered for them. But this Mm -hmm. is for them. Uh, It's just like um, um, when we're uh, at the home, when we're serving food, the elders get served first. Right, right. Mm -hmm. These beings are elders. And their yeah, special not, guests. Exactly. Yeah. So, and a lot of times it's not seen that way. I see what you're saying. Yeah, it makes sense. And a lot of these groups offer. Uh, uh, a lot of them uh, will go to like the Dollar Tree or the 99 cent store and get the cheapest uh, bits of cakes or juices or whatever they can. Mm-hmm. And. I understand maybe having a budget or something, yet um, a lot of these things have so many preservatives and stuff, and if you're going to leave something in the environment, uh, which a lot of these groups do, you want something that's, one, not going to harm the environment, and two, you want something that's going to degrade quickly. Mm -hmm. And if, if an animal were to come and eat uh, what you leave, you want to make sure it's not harming the animal. Right. So there's just a lot of... Yeah, something uh, to think about. Yeah. And, you know, these beings, you know, they, they, they thrive on uh, what in folklore we, we, we call human magic. Hmm. Part of human magic is what we make that they're not able to make, such as baked goods, oh, uh, um, uh, fermented drinks. Uh, the fairy they being, like that. Wow. they like that, and these are fairly easy to make. Uh, <clears throat> even if you just put a bit of honey in some milk. Uh, and have honeyed milk that's going to be incorporated into the environment fairly easily and and not really harm the environment. So, Mm -hmm. and baked goods that you, you bake yourself. Because again, you're wanting to share with these elder beings. 
Yeah, and it sounds like as you're doing those things, it's the intention that's being put into what you're making or baking for the fairy realm or those there in the cleric realm so that they feel the the connection. It's an energy, right? There's an energetic Mm -hmm. communication happening between what they're making or leaving in the offering of that connection. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And other aspects... Mm-hmm. Yeah, and other aspects of the human magic that that helps is our our song. Not so much what we might hear on the radio, <laughs> but um, our singing, our voices. The individual person holding their very specific resonance in vibration, and if we mm-hmm. sing or tone or vocalize in some way, that is, you're saying, also a, a form of communication for them? For the exactly. Even oh, just okay. simple things like Nice. It you does know, leave a ring. Yeah, I can feel the vibration of that. Yeah. Um, uh, dancing. <clears throat> You know, offering your dance, dancing on the behalf, dancing for uh, <clears throat> the fairies, dancing for the nature uh, beings. <clears throat> Storytelling. Mm. And they love also, to hear the storytelling, huh? They, they do. <clears throat> because there's, you know, that's how so much of the connections are built the connections are built through sharing Mm -hmm. we share food and drink we share uh, our song we share our stories we share uh, our dances we share our silence Mm -hmm. that's why you -hmm. know when, when doing ancestor work and there's a point where fairy work and ancestor work begin to blur a bit uh, you go far enough back in your ancestry, and <clears throat> it's a little harder to tell when you're working directly with the ancestors, when you're working directly with, with the fairy, the lines blur a bit because uh, you go back far enough, uh, your ancestors have worked with the fairy beings and have worked with the nature beings. And, of course, that contact that connection, that communication doesn't stop Hmm. because these beings are um, not necessarily physical all the time. And so, you know, these bonds that we, that we build uh, continue. And um, when we're doing fairy work, when we're doing ancestor work, uh, we're working to continue and perhaps build new bonds that mm-hmm. are in keeping more with, like you mentioned earlier, the modern times, the modern energies and frequencies. So updating the tradition yeah. is an ongoing right. process. The living tradition, that makes sense. And Alan, we just have like a minute here to before we go to break. If you'd like to share some of your contact information or your website, I have here is a www.lightweaveracademy. Sorry, weavers, make that plural. Lightweaversacademy.com. So you can check out Alan and his offerings, and we will come back on the other side of this commercial to continue this fascinating conversation. Whether it's coming from the world of entertainment, integrative medicine, quantum theory, conspiracy fact, ancient archaeology, sacred geometry, financial trends, or perhaps even from the very world of self-help and motivational speaking, Real Revolution Radio possesses the information you need. Listen today to our daily inspiring lineup of podcast radio talk shows only on realrevolutionradio.com. to the Marine Show, where we will introduce you to the world of alternative remedies. Join 
Marie Brazani as she hosts discussions with leading experts in the fields of hypnotherapy, acupuncture, yoga, Ayurveda, EFT, chronic healing, integrative medicine, and so much more. Marie will also brave topics that many consider taboo. Yes, taboo talk. Tune in today to The Marie Show Heard on popular social media and now on Smart TV. Hey, it's a marvelous radio production only on RealRevolutionRadio.com. Cleveland, we now have liftoff to a higher level of consciousness. Tune in to realrevolutionradio.com, the number one source for independent music and inspirational podcast radio. Awaken, evolve, inspire, and join the evolution only on realrevolutionradio.com. You're listening to RealRevolutionRadio.com. There's hope as long as you're alive. Thank you for joining me back on the second segment of this show with my special guest, Alan Sims. Uh, we've been having a wonderful conversation. It's so intriguing to hear the history and the information and the blending of all these ancestral ways to even where we are currently. Um, there's, I, just, I love having these conversations with you, Alan. There's just some wonderful, really deep knowledge that you're bringing forth. And talking about the fairies and the traditions and the living, you know, all of this is so, so wonderful. And you're offering these types of services and knowledge through your business there, correct? Uh, yeah. Light Weavers Academy is where I now have my office. Uh, I've been there uh, a little less than a year. Uh, prior to that, everything... I did was out of my home or the home of my students or or apprentices and it was kept fairly quiet I wasn't very public until you know October almost a year ago Uh, now I'm in the public and that's a it's a big transition for me And, yeah, uh, going public for anyone is a bit of a challenge, isn't it? <laughs> well, most people. Mm-hmm. I, well, it's not everyone, but <laughs> it's, it's, it's a wonderful sort of self-satisfying um, feeling. At the same time, it's very scary and nervous. Did you experience that as well? On an ongoing basis. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> uh, trying to describe what I do, uh, not only for for the classes um but also in terms of uh, sessions trying to okay. you know trying to let people go okay well i'm going to go to the other world and i'm going to uh interact with these uh beings and we're gonna uh you know discuss what we see going on with your health and your life and we're going to start uh kind of you know it's, it's, it's kind of a soul makeover uh, we're going to find stuff that's not you and, 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 and pull that out of your system and find out where it's supposed to be and help it get to where it's supposed to be. We're going to find aspects of you wherever you might be and get you to come home. Uh, mm-hmm. So this and, hard for someone to wrap their head around if they haven't already kind of opened up or experienced much of the, you know, energetic side of things or, you know, the multidimensional right. side of things. It is challenging. I do hear you. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like though with what you were just sharing there is, is a, well, for me anyway, it made sense, but I, I know what I know. <laughs> you know? Right. I hear what you're saying, talking to mainstream or, or to those that um, have no idea about alternative energy work of sorts. And it is challenging. I, yeah, you're right. Uh, so I am, ever looking at okay how do i how do i how can i find a way to uh describe what i do mm-hmm. so this idea of a you know of a, you know of a makeover uh <clears throat> seems to be working uh, and seems to be you know appropriate 
It does. Yeah, I've often found myself referring to the term and using it um, like a spa. You know, your soul comes in and it gets cleaned up. We, you know, clear away the weight and the heaviness or, you know, the blockages and, and keeping it to terms and references that they may likely resonate with, you know. And then when you're done within this, you know, sort of a treatment or process, or healing, you know, then you're coming out far more activated and higher vibrational and clear-headed and focused or, you know, content. So it is a challenge. I use a lot of variable descriptive words, <laughs> but it does help in some cases to change it up even, depending on who you're talking to without knowing their background or their connection. Um, there will be some words that strike with some people where it won't with others. It's always a changing factor. Yeah. And even meeting, you know, practitioners of other healing modalities, um, you know, they'll come in, we'll do a trade, and they'll go, you've explained it, I've experienced it, I have no idea what happened, but I do feel great, I will be back. So it's like, um, <laughs> yeah, I've had clients even say, oh, well, I don't know what to call this. I'm just going to call it an experience. I go, that works. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, they so, enjoy what they're receiving and how it works, but it's often hard for even them to give any kind of a description or wording to it as well. Yeah. Yeah. So it's an ongoing uh, exploration coming into uh the the mainstream as it were mm -hmm. uh, and then navigating uh, uh, you know other aspects of oh this is no longer just a a home tradition that's in a small community of people who are in the know uh, it's now um, there's a business aspect I have an office and overhead and all this other stuff and I'm like okay how do I navigate that so uh, you know so I just look at okay well you know we go back and maintain spiritual courtesy we you know and, and, and a big part of that is just manners please and thank you exactly yes a lot of the courtesy like you're saying yes and common sense to a degree as well you know, mm -hmm. understanding the life that is actually existing even when we don't see it and still being respectful and courteous and, you know, mindful of what's happening, like to the trees and the planet, or the plants and flowers and people in general. There's a lot of disrespect with people to people we're still sorting through mm -hmm. and healing from. Oh, definitely, definitely. Um, yeah. And that's one of the biggest, uh, biggest points with my students you know starting out and ongoing is uh, do you have a practice for forgiveness do you have a practice for letting go do you have a practice for gratitude uh, and i'm not simply just you know saying you know oh you know i you know i say thank you but do you have an actual practice you know mm -hmm. a set of steps that you go through uh, as your gratitude uh, to extend mm -hmm. it, uh, as part of your spiritual service and spiritual uh, courtesy do you have a practice for letting go of things mm -hmm. I'm not surprising how many don't have a practice for letting go or forgiving isn't it a lot of yeah. surprising yeah how many don't practitioners in in the industry even um, just sort mm -hmm. of come in and, and either bring what they've learned or they might not have been taught as properly. It kind of depends on where they're getting their knowledge from or where, where it's coming from to yeah. how they approach it moving forward. It's surprising. I have run a, I myself ran through many practitioners who I found were very disrespectful and, you know, they, they bypass a lot of that courtesy and just do what they do. So there's a lot of self-gain. There's a lot of, oh, me, me, me in it. Or you just got to be careful and really intuitively feel who you're connecting with and what they're offering. And you'll feel the resonance of truth when, when you do. But, yeah, it's surprising. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's sad at the same time. But then, you know, we honor where everybody is at their at their path and their, their learning. And, and perhaps that particular direction was needed for those people so that they could better appreciate things later perhaps or something you know there's lessons in everything we do exactly. um, it's, yeah re, it's kind of refining your group or your connections you know your mm -hmm. 
your peeps, you know, that you want to refer to or co- colleague with and, and breaking it down to who who is a fit or who isn't doesn't mean they're bad. just means they're just not the fit for your tribe or your group or, you know, your your connections. So it is it is a, a interesting journey, isn't it? Very interesting. And uh, it's... I'm still excited when... Um, I introduce forgiveness practice, for instance, to mm-hmm. someone, and they're, you know, hesitant, or maybe they have a bit of judgment around it at first, and then oh, when they it's finish, usually the case, yeah. <laughs> you know, just like anything else, uh, you know, all of us, when we're introduced to something new, um, and then they finish with a forgiveness practice, and they're they're often blown away by how much better they feel. Mm-hmm. It is surprising. It's, it's as though a lot of times there's that lack of hope, perhaps, that they don't feel there is any other way to move or anywhere else to go with it until they do and they experience it and it, you can just see the expansion and the delight that comes in and the hopefulnesses that start to present so that they can better create their reality and move in the direction that's more appropriate for them. It's just amazing. I love to see those experiences. I totally understand yeah. what you're saying there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I do, I want to, not to quickly change on topic or anything, but you also are working with the gathering of elders. I'm very, very curious with what time we have left to talk, what you might share through that as well. The gathering of elders uh, is... The uh, a free gathering uh, at my office, um, and each month we work with a different uh, hero, shiro, god, or goddess in the in the European work, mm-hmm. or we'll spend a day learning. Uh, the history and practices associated with a certain holiday, such as, um, uh, you know, the the seasonal rites uh, or the solstices or equinoxes. Mm -hmm. We'll learn what what our ancestors were doing, what they were experiencing. uh, And other times we might work with um, aspects of the earth itself so we might work with um, actually you know mother earth herself and mm-hmm. helping people uh, remove their blockages to sensing feeling gaining guidance uh, from mother earth we might work with um, mother nature and her consort uh, and getting in touch and getting to feel the difference between the presence of the planet and the presence of Mother Nature. Mm-hmm. Getting a sense of, of the differences and nuances so that we can work directly with these beings and rebuild uh, the human natural realms, the human fairy realms, uh, rebuild that community. Nice. Yes, with respect and courtesy. Oh, definitely. Definitely. (laughs) Yes, Uh, do you have, I'm wondering if you have any curious um, uh, stories from perhaps your students or when you've been a part of this gathering of elders and what what came from that? Do you have anything, any kind of a story Um, there? Yeah. um, We we did a a gathering of elders. around Father's Day of this year Um, and it was to uh, help uh, clean any uh, you know clear any disturbances etc that may have may be in the father's lineage as well as anything that may be in the father child child father relationship so two two overarching pieces there Um, one of the participants uh, when his father died he he 
uh, a while after his father died, he requested his father to come and, and visit him, you know, uh, spiritually. Okay. And uh, his father seemed very different, uh, but he was like, well, he's, he's no longer physical, so maybe that explains it. And they interacted, and it was strange. <laughs> uh, when in this experience with me guiding the, 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 the practices and me making sure that only the correct beings are showing up mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. when he was interacting uh, during gathering of elders with his father it was his actual father he could feel feel it and the conversation was more in alignment with how they would interact and right. apparently for the past 20 or so years he had been very still carrying that kind of disturbance about why was my dad so strange <laughs> when we met uh, in, in, you know, in the other world? Um, and so it was a revelation to him, oh, one, that is why it wasn't my dad. <clears throat> and two, it, there's a, a big difference between trying to uh, just kind of make, make up a practice and do it and getting a practice that's guided uh, by someone who has experience. It makes a world of difference having someone to help guide through that. The, the discernment and the refinement of those frequencies to determining if it is someone you know versus someone you don't. <laughs> it, it takes a little practice. It's doable. We all do it every time we walk into a room or a store or you know the office at work or somewhere and you can just feel the tension or the heaviness you know or you, mm -hmm. you pick it up I mean, we all do it it's just now mm -hmm. in regards to refining it and really understanding the, the little nuances and sensations that are coming in mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and even I you know when you know a, a lot of my work um, has been uh, birth and, 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 and deaths you know uh, helping people who have had difficulties getting pregnant, <clears throat> helping those families uh, clear whatever needs to be cleared and retrieve whatever needs to be retrieved so that they can establish a family, as well as doing the practices to uh, kind of dedicate the child to the, you know, to the work that the child's going to be doing spiritually, you know, so those practices. And also the transitions of helping people when it's time for them to, to leave the body. Mm -hmm. And that's so important and not, uh, not enough being done th this day and age. I'm seeing more and more mm -hmm. popping up, which is so wonderful. There's that help in crossing mm -hmm. over our loved ones. But, yeah, much, yeah. much gratitude for you and those that are doing that. Wonderful. Yeah. And when my dad made his transition, um, I helped him do, do all of that work. Wow. Uh, it was profound. Uh, mm -hmm. and at moments uh, very very uh, intense emotionally uh, and I'm sure it was mixed feelings yeah. right to, to the personal mm -hmm. connection of him being your father versus helping his mm -hmm. soul cross over I imagine it was yeah. quite the experience for you mm -hmm. and after that you know I did get with some colleagues and say okay so uh, you know, my dad has made his transition. He and I made sure that he got over just fine. And um, I'm here with you now because my dad just died. <laughs> and uh, I don't want to try to even attempt to go through this alone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. That yeah. takes a lot of courage to reach out and ask for help. It's not an easy thing to do. I'm sure you're glad you did it, yes? Oh, definitely, definitely, definitely. Because there were aspects of, of the, the grief and sadness and whatnot that uh, I wasn't, you know, I needed to access, but I, I, I couldn't access yet because, you know, still kind of the shock of, mm -hmm. of everything. But yeah, and, just believe that this person is no longer physically a part of your 
experience anymore. It's just, it can be a shock, absolutely. Yeah, and then all the physical world stuff you have to do mm, uh, on yeah. top of that. This, you know, and I was sitting in, you know, in the bank, and they're closing out his accounts, and uh, uh, I had to have the bank manager uh, stop. I said, wait, uh, uh, it, you know, give me a moment here. It, it really feels like you're erasing my dad. Oh, man. Uh, and, you know, the whole staff at the bank, you know, it was so just amazing. He said, oh, I, I hadn't thought of that. Mm-hmm. And he said, let's just sit here a moment, let you uh, feel into that, and I'm going to sit with my, my own version of this realization. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and then, you know, we were able to continue. But it was, it was a wow uh, moment of, <clears throat> you know, just all the different layers of, of oh, he's gone. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. And, yeah, those layers that they weave into our, our exi- existence, right? I mean, we don't think that mm-hmm. people have an impact. <laughs> And oftentimes we don't feel that ourselves, that we, you know, we're so small, we don't mean anything, we're not, you know, affecting any change, but really we do, and it's oftentimes not really seen until after someone has passed. Right. Yeah. Yeah, what an amazing experience that sounds like it was, yeah. And I think the grieving of any kind of loss, um, whether it was a physical loss of a beloved or, you know, the... The, a type of loss, I don't know if there's a word for that, but, you know, when you, um, people change. They really, really change. And so in some senses, when a person has changed significantly enough, uh, other parts of the family or friends will feel as though that person is no longer there. The person they used to know, you know, is one example. And so there is, for some, a grieving and a loss that has taken place during those experiences as well you know um, it's it's a process yeah. and so a lot of this is really important for a person to experience i think in any in any case um, but there becomes a time where you know enough is enough to the degree that yes there's a process in time and it is different for everyone you know maybe weeks or months for some and it could be years for others but whatever that appropriate timeline is you'll know because you reach that point where you're like enough is enough i, I want to move past this now this is, feels like it's starting to hold me back or to that degree so sessions like you're talking that you offer as well as the ones you went and, and asked for you know assistance in to help clear some of those stuck you know frequencies or energies that were keeping you from you know healing and moving forward definitely because you know I, I see so many practitioners, uh, particularly at the place where I, where I were at my office. Mm-hmm. There's there's this uh, stoicism they're trying to maintain. It's like mm-hmm. uh, you know I watch them and, and and I see them going through stuff and they're like you know the idea that you know you know that they seem to be operating in through and as is I'm spiritual. I have to do this myself. Or I'm spiritual. I've already transcended this, so... uh, Yeah, a little denial there, isn't it? Yeah, when they may not have, they just suppressed it. Yeah, and they they don't seem to understand my point. It's like, uh, you know, we can't rely just on non-physical experiences to heal us. We can't just rely on non-physical experiences to teach us and train us. We need, uh, from time to time, uh, a physical teacher who's mm-hmm. ahead of us. Yes, I totally agree with that. That's part of some of my past history information <laughs> in what the way I moved forward with my spiritual connection as well. Uh, there's a lot you can learn on your own and through unseen energies and support and so forth. But there comes a time where it's exhausting, or at least for me it was. And I'm like, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> I'm telling the universe, you know, enough. I'm done. I got this is so draining and so exhausting. And I feel like I've 
got more unanswered questions than I started with. And I said, please bring me a teacher, somebody that can help me understand all this. And, of course, it did. Eventually, I connected with my first shamanic teacher. And what an experience this has been ever since. I still keep in touch with her and work with her in such a wonderful way. So I agree, at least for my case, having a teacher, having someone in physical form to, you know, offer you information and guide you in a certain way and, you know, just helping understand and that you're not crazy, <laughs> which is a big, big, you know, resistance a lot of people have is they just start thinking they're crazy instead of seeking, you know, alternative approaches to what they're experiencing. Yeah, I've enjoyed it. I think it's made a huge difference for me to connect with a, a physical teacher. Yeah, and the same thing's true with with our own healing work. You know, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I have some uh, interesting inflammation and things going on right now, and in, in my uh, arms and, and shoulders. I'm doing what I can, mm-hmm. but I'm also you know, I have I have a colleague who does lots of forms of body work, and so you know, I get on on her table, and she does the physical work that my body mm-hmm. requires to you know release that tension and yes. stress. And uh, <clears throat> one of my other colleagues does acupuncture and, and things like you know, the traditional Chinese medicine. With the, also with the herbs and everything else, and mm-hmm. you know, I got on his table. And, uh, he helped me process some of the, you know, emotional stress that is has been piled on my shoulders, you know, figuratively and you know perhaps literally. Yes, yes, energy it, is it, energy, and it does feel like you carry the weight of the world sometimes, doesn't it? When we get yeah. overwhelmed and there's so many responsibilities. Yeah, so, you know, we have to acknowledge, oh, um, and, and be okay with recognizing, uh, yeah, I'm a spiritual being having whatever experience, and I need someone with a little more experience in this area to, you know, kind of show me at least some bullet points. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's helpful to get other perspectives from different practitioners, even those mm-hmm. in the yeah massage industry or acupuncture. I mean, they've got a spiritual connection. It may be different from where you or I are coming from, but their perspective is still very valid and, and most mm-hmm. times very helpful. <laughs> you know, just yeah. as somebody hearing some experience you're having and they go, well, sounds like it's this, 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 this or something, and you're going, oh, I didn't even think of that, <laughs> you know, and it gives you a whole new aspect to work with when, you know, trying to correct those frequencies within yourself. Exactly. And then, of course, there's going to be, you know, something they say, and you're going to go, oh, and mm-hmm. a whole new, you yeah. know, uh, aspect of insight yeah. uh, uh, is made available because, um Again, in, in, you know, my family talks about the repeated stitch. You know, you don't just hear a, um, some wisdom once and, like, get it. Sometimes you have to hear the same thing from several True. different people. And then yeah. it, it, it's able to, you're, you're able to process it. Because yeah, prior to, it clicks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so that's also why you look at, um, uh, getting with different physical practitioners who, you know, are legitimate, you know, they, you know, they're professionals in their, you know, mm-hmm. in their field. Uh, and, uh, you know, you, you ask for help. Yes. Yeah. It's even, yeah, doctors have asked other doctors for second opinions or they have forums or mm-hmm. little, you know, um, boards, boards of directors or boards, you know, sorts that they can connect with. And nowadays with so much digital, you're easily able to go online and find those forums or groups of like-mindedness and post or pose questions and you know, see what kind of responses come back. So it's, yeah, definitely a helpful tool to reach out. And even when it's hard to do so, <laughs> it's so well worth it uh, most often. And this is another aspect of spiritual courtesy. Yes, you're right. You're being courteous True. to yourself and your path. You're being courteous to others and their path, and how and and being 
you know, having that that courtesy uh, in in your spiritual community, wherever it is that you live. Yes, that's a it's an important point that you make too about courtesy for ourselves. I think that's a way overdue and overlooked component of our of our existence for most all of us, in any case. You know that we just set ourselves aside and we don't pay attention, we don't give ourselves the courtesy of a break or downtime or vacation or pampering, we often ex- exude ourselves to exhaustion before it becomes clear, oh, hey, I need to take care of myself. That in and of itself is a whole another interview and conversation. <laughs> There's so much there to, to talk about. Alan, I know we're er- ending our hours here i really really appreciate your presence and all that you're sharing with everyone thank you thank you for being you and for those of you interested in continuing to find out more about alan please check out his website www.lightweaversacademy.com and find out what services he's got and how you can connect he's an amazing man and brings forth some really wonderful traditions thank you alan for being with us Oh, thank you so much, Trixie. It's, you know, I didn't know what to expect being interviewed, but uh, it was way less scary <laughs> than I was hallucinating. So thank <laughs> you. You're most welcome, and thank you again. I look forward to having you back again at another time, um, bringing forth some more of these wonderful teachings that you have and um, the humor that you bring forth as well. It's, it's a wonderful connection. Thank you for being a friend. Thank you so much. I love you. Love you too. Have a great day. The revolution will not be televised. The revolution will not be televised. But heard instead, dear listeners, through podcast radio on Real. Revolutionradio.com. Never before has inspirational podcast radio been taken to this next level of wow. Until now. Today in the age of information, more and more people are searching for answers. And in solutions. And how to better approach and perceive every day-to-day concerns. By tuning in to RealRevolutionRadio.com. Isn't it about time we take back our lives? Back in consciousness. In a higher state of awareness. In the evolution of our own state of higher will being yes we can do so consciously every day by tuning in to the many groundbreaking and third eye opening podcasts our new cleveland based network of over 33 paradigm shifting internet talk shows only on realrevolutionradio.com be part of that change evolve be inspired